Oh boy, it's been a while since I sit down here in the studio looking at the camera and talking to you about photography. And in this episode, the sorry state of photography business these days. Before we start, I'd like to say a big thank you to Sarah Morning, the company that makes this tutorial possible. Thank you, Sarah Morning. Are you a photographer? Which means that you make money out of photography regardless whether it's full-time or part-time. Do you realize that 2023 has not been a great year for photographers? What I'm trying to say is that a lot of photographers that I know, including myself, find that income is really sucky these days. We have less jobs, we get paid less, old clients are not shooting that much, new clients are hard to come by. And when they do come by, the budget is like junk food budget. I don't know where you're from, but I know that our viewers come from all corners of the world. Firstly, I'd like to hear your comment down there if you're shooting professionally, regardless whether full-time, part-time, you make money out of it. I want to know the state of your photography business like in your city, state, and country. Mine? That's the chart. So I'm going to break this discussion down together with you and each of my producer behind the camera. We're going to talk about what causes this. Firstly, it's easy to blame COVID. COVID was done and dusted last year. I always think that COVID changed the industry, not the budget, not the sales, not the revenue. What do I mean by that? If you look at how ads are done before COVID, customers are more fussy. They go OCD on the pre-production of shoots, which means that they choose the talent, they choose the location, the wardrobe, the makeup, everything. But during COVID, businesses and customers need to stay alive. And during lockdown, what is the best way to advertise? Animations. Quick short photos and videos where people don't really care about quality, but they want to get the ads out on time very quickly and recover some revenue. And that reminds me of what one of my ex-director, Chris Ngoi, said. Once your clients can accept bad quality ads, it's very hard for them to start accepting good quality ones. Why? Because during COVID, you just want to get the ad out very quickly and for two years, everybody got used to all those crappily short ads and when COVID is out, they go like, you know, I'm used to bad ads. Why do I have to spend so much money to make nicer looking ads? I don't mean good or bad ads. I mean ads that are not that nice but gets the message across. So if you're one of those photographers that were really good, pictures very nice, high quality production, you're going to feel it even more. Am I right? Do you think the same thing, Yicho? Seems that way. Yeah. If you are a lousy photographer and you're a beginner and you started and you go like, hey, you know what? The market changed now. They can accept my shit now. They're not that fussy anymore. Write down in the comment section whether your business took a little bit of a hit this year or your business improved. If your business improved, then possibly you were sucky back then. There are times that I do not pay the bill of my Netflix and they get disconnected. I can't watch Netflix anymore. So you know what I watch? The Saki TV. And I can get by that, I can live with it for weeks and months. That's, that's like what the market is behaving with bad ads. So Yu Chong, how do you overcome this problem? How do you improve the market? The way I think is that you've got to do it gradually again. You must never let your customer think that shits are okay. So you got to go back and tell them that, no, this is not nice. Why not we make it a little bit nicer? Start maybe with the production wardrobe. Start maybe by spending a little bit more hours on pre-production. That way, the cost won't be so drastic. Instead of spending five grand and telling your customer that, hey, we are out of COVID now, I want to make the ads nicer now since you're paying, let's make it 10 grand, twice the price. No, you start by making it 6,000 by getting in more pre-production hours. And then the next time you shoot for them, go for 7,000. And before you know it, in five months or in five different shoots, you would have raised the budget by twice the amount. Your job is not just to shoot nicely. Your job is to impart the knowledge of aesthetic and tell them that if you put red and green together, both of these are complementary colors, you're going to be able to see a distinct difference of what this color impart in that poster. And that is why I've decided to get the talent to wear red. Or you might want to avoid this color because these are receding color. It will make your subject look like they're falling back into the wall. So that is why you don't use colors like this. 
you know, it can even extend to areas that you may not know. Example, when it comes to makeup. Sometimes I catch myself telling the client, oh, please don't use red color eyeshadow. You're going to make her look like she has swollen eyes or a Times Square prostitute. Either way, your job is not just to shoot, but to waste the bar on knowledge and aesthetic. And that comes to point number two, why your business and my business is taking a hit this year. Their level of acceptance of good quality has dropped so much, so much so that they allow their own people to think that they can do the photo shoot. Smartphones. And because smartphones are so great these days and the lowering of the quality bar makes them think that, hey, you know, I can just put the food on the table and then use my smartphone and take a shot and boss, I think we have our menu already. We can forget about hiring Michelle as the food stylist and forget about hiring Andrew to be the food photographer because look at this and I see this a lot. Smartphone is just reinforcing them that they can shoot on their own. So how do you overcome this, Yi Chong? You know what I do? I use the same smartphone because it would be stupid for me to think that, no, I'm going to be anti-smartphone because smartphone is bad for my business. The moment that you think that smartphone is nice and you can shoot it on your own, you're going to be taking away the business from me. But if you are a photographer, you know one thing, that the pre-production, the staging, the styling, the lighting, all this, the plating is so important when it comes to a shoot. Just taking out any camera and do the shoot, that is like the end of the whole process. Take a look at this photo here that I shot for my client. I purposely use a smartphone. In fact, I told Yi Chong that, you know what we're going to do this year? This year onward, every time we shoot with our mirrorless or DSLR, we're going to slip an iPhone in there and take a shot and then put it into the rushes and let the client choose. And then when they go like, damn, they, you, you are telling me that this is shot with a smartphone? Man. I use my smartphone and I can't even get it that nice. And it's the same smartphone. That's what you need to do to overcome this. The smartphone is not the enemy. The perception that the client thinks that he uses a smartphone is the same as you using your smartphone is the one that's causing you to lose business. So don't you think that it's time for you to incorporate smartphone into your shoot and put in your gallery that, dude, you know what? I can shoot with smartphone. And even when I shoot with smartphone, it's like 12 times nicer than you shooting with a smartphone. And that is important because we cannot have our client going around thinking that their janitors can use a smartphone and shoot equally as nice as you. The pre-production and the equipment and the crew that you have is going to supersede them at least 5 to 10 times. So whip out your smartphone and try to take a nice shot. If you cannot, then you better watch this episode. Remember how I started with this episode? I couldn't get a good shot of Millet the model and I had to stop because I figured out that it's a whole new workflow. So in short, what I'm trying to tell you with point number two is, yes, smartphone is taking away a bit of your business. You know what? Incorporate smartphone in your business. Take a look at this series of photos that I took for Kampung La and their menu, all completely done with smartphone. But let me show you how I can make this shot not so appealing. Compare these two shots. That's right. It's the propping, it's the styling, it's the lighting. So smartphone is not just smartphone. You are the smart in smartphone. Don't forget that. And never let the customer think that they are the smart. And thirdly, consumption. Have you doom scroll on your bed? That's right. You're lying down on your bed. Before you fall asleep, you have to do the doom scroll. So what you do is you have your phone and then you start scrolling, 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 scrolling. And everybody does this. And this is what consumers are doing these days. They are watching every ad that you produce on that small little smartphone screen. Which means that the resolution is not that important anymore. The size of the image is not that important anymore. Then the amount of time that your image gets to captivate the audience is really short. It is this long. Which means that people are not looking at the photos the same way that they did. I still remember the time that we have this photo kaki forum that we go every night on our desktop computers, spending hours scrutinizing the photos, zooming in, checking the pixel. Wow, why is this shot so nice? Gone are those days. Your consumer are spending less time looking at your image because there are tons of them after all. And the worst part is your image needs to compete with an animated video and it has audio. 
and music. So how do you overcome this? Well, my point of view is that you just cannot shoot as easily as it was before in terms of the propping and the original idea. You now really need to sit down and start thinking that, hey, how do I overcome that doom scroll? That, oh, oh look at this. She looks horrible. And that could be one of the ways that you captivate your viewer longer. Something out of the ordinary. It doesn't need to be beautiful. What I'm trying to say is that it needs to be different. Something that breaks the scroll. And that can only come with you being creative. Last time, I've got more pixels. I've got a hassle blood. I've got more colors. You know, I can captivate you with this. So basically, you just have to shoot very differently now. And if you're not learning video, by 2024, you may be out of the business because I can tell you this, isn't it true? These days, most of our clients will come up to us and say, I want a video. Can you also shoot us some steals? Because I can assure you, six or seven out of 10 of our customers have that requirement. Do we charge for the steel shoots? Yes, we do. But they are not the main reason we get the project. We get the project because of our original script of the ideas making ads like this. And then we do the shoot after filming the video. And hey, are you still shooting horizontal? If you are, then you're a big victim of consumption. Because I can tell you now that eight out of 10 of my customers would prefer to have their ads or their shots done vertically. And you know what that means? Our crew needs to shoot vertical one time and horizontal one time. You cannot just exactly crop it. Not all the time, right? When I hear that, when you hear that, what does it mean? More work or more charging opportunity? Because you can now go up to your client and say that, hey, let me just flip this table around you. I now have to do twice the work. The actors have to act twice. We have to do one vertical and we have to do one horizontal. So I need to shoot twice the time, which is something that you don't have four to five years ago. Oh, don't you dare laugh because in the coming future, perhaps all my videos would need to be vertical format like this. You need to change to survive or you're gonna take a dive. And that is why you see us introducing our shots and our tutorials in vertical format. Lighting. Lighting is the biggest determinant of what making customers think that they can do your job. Let me explain why. Because traditionally, if you wanna be a commercial product or high-end portrait fashion photographer, you need to work with flashes. And flashes like these brands are not easy to work with and they are not cheap to own. And they are not easy to learn and that is why partly why this channel is so popular on YouTube because we teach people how to use legacy studio strobes and flashes. Lights that you don't see the emission of light until you click it and when you click it, it's too late. And these lights need you to have skills and techniques and experiences. So much so that you need to learn things like the famous five. You need to learn things like the big five of lighting, intensity, inverse square lot, you need to learn about shadow grades, you need to learn about highlight, you need to learn about stops and mid-tone relation to highlight shadow and all that stuff. And not forgetting, learn how to read histogram because by the time you click that photo, the light has already struck and you have taken the photo. But look at the lights these days. LED lights that you can buy for the cheap. All you need to do is flick the switch and you can really see the light and adjust the light and change the modifier until it satisfies you with the shadow, highlight and mid-tone. And when it is, you can use your mirrorless camera and instantaneously see it from the exposure. You don't even need to worry about exposure now. That's the state of photography. You just flick the light, adjust the bundles, put on the umbrella and shoot until you get a nice photo. That has very little skill. That has got to do more with the convenience of technology. Oh, before I go to the next point, I'd like to pause now and tell you that Ceremonic make this video possible. Ceremonic is an international brand that makes quality audio and recording devices and microphone. Do visit their website and check out the collection of great microphones that they have. And I'm proud to tell you that I am a happy user of Ceremonic microphones as well. Not just one. How many do you think we have? Five, six? <laughs> yeah, that's how good it is. So if you are looking for quality microphones and audio devices to get started with, with your filming project and video project, look no further, check out Ceremonic. And thank you, Ceremonic, for making this video possible. There are very much lower barrier of entry as a photographer or videographer these days. Just get yourself LED lights, 
get yourself a mirrorless camera or even a smartphone and start shooting until it looks nice. This is how cheap it is now to be a photographer. I still remember that when we first started, we had to save money to buy studio strobes. We had to save more money to buy, I still remember it was like five years in before I could afford a beauty dish. And take a look at this. I still remember that every time when we do filming, we have rolls and rolls of cables, SDI cables and connectors and junction box like this before we can even fit it to the client. And you know what, you Chang, remember? We don't even have LCD panels affordably for clients. We have to like rig it on our own. There were no small HD when we first started. We had to take computer screen and hack them, solve the leg and then don't get me started. And every time we do filming, I'll be the one crimping the cable and soldering the cable. And cables need to run by hundreds of meters before we can even start filming. We have a whole department of this group of people that deal with SDI cables. And look at what we have these days. Wireless HDMI. You know what? Our cameras didn't even have HDMI ports. Yeah, because I started like 25 years ago, right? <laughs> My D70 doesn't have a HDMI port, okay? So that's it. Technology has made it very convenient for newcomers to come in here with newer equipments than yours. And you cannot easily buy a new equipment because you just spend so much money on your Hasselblad. Whereas with this photographer, his lights are new, his camera is new, and the moment he shoots it, the client can see it, they go like, hmm, you know what, I, I, I kind of like this guy because I can see his light and the shadow. The other guy, he just come in with this big ego about his knowledge on Famous Five and Big Five like his Dean Collins. And finally, my last point, this. This flat lay, top down, really makes client think that, hey, it's easy to shoot. Just lay the foot, lay the product on the floor and start shooting from the top. If you're talking about this like five to 10 years ago, this is like a forbidden, laziest angle that a photographer can do. In fact, right up to today, I've got famous agencies that hire us to shoot thinking that flat lay can work for every kind of shoot. And lo and behold, when we start shooting, they go like, oh, I can't see how big the foot is. I don't even know. Yeah, it's flat. And that brings me back to the first point that you need to impart this knowledge. So what Yi Chong and I typically do, we don't argue with the client. We do what they want us to do. And then at the site, I will do one more shot. And when they look at it, they go, you are right. This isometric angle is so much nicer than the flat lay. Mm -hmm. I bet you remember that project where they started out, they wanted all the 100 overshots to be flat lay. Yep, and switch. then they switch. <laughs> they switch. And what does that mean? That means that we had to shoot twice the amount of time, but the role that we play to educate the client. Because I could have done the laziest thing and just shoot the flat lay the way they want it. And then when they go back, they realize that, oh crap, we can't really see the perspective and the size of the food and what's the ingredient on that plate. And they probably get half their shots rejected by the client because this is an agency. And Yi Chong and I actually had the thought that should we just shoot what they want with knowing that they will not be able to use the shot and then they have to engage us again. They won't tell you that you are right and they are wrong. They say like, we have to shoot five more items and this time we don't want the flat lay. How much cheaper can you do this now? Not that cheap. Not that cheap. When you say it's not that cheap, you know what happened to the client? They will shoot it on their own. So this is what I thought that contributed to how our business is taking a hit in 2023. Photography. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. You could be in a different state, city, country that has different challenges. And I want you to head down to the comment section, share with us. Because the more you share with us, the more we learn. And I'll also like to learn how you are overcoming these challenges. So that's it. I mentioned a few things over and over again. Smartphone and ease of use of LED lights. For that, I'd like to invite you to my e-learning website where we embark on a journey to use more smartphones in our lessons to shoot nicer photos and also extensively use LED lights. Because here's the thing, why do you need to suffer with all this legacy classic rule of looking at lights when you can easily flick a switch and see where they are now? Because I need to relearn. And because if I can relearn, I should be teaching you so that you have a lower barrier to entry and you learn a new affordable style of lighting. Use continuous LED light and 
make your smartphone pictures nicer. So head on to my e-learning website here and check out the premium courses where I teach users how to use smartphone and get really nice pictures. So nice that the client can't even tell, yeah, you're lying, that's, a, that's not a smartphone. Is it a smartphone? Is that really a smartphone? Linda, take a, take a look at this smartphone. Oh my God. And then Linda would normally say that, yeah, smartphone also so nice really. Oh. Hmm. And this is where you humbly look at the client and say that confuse not skill with technology. What I'm giving you here is pure skill.